Hello and welcome to another episode of Classic Restos, the longest running automotive TV show of its kind in Australia. And on this week's episode, it's about a brand of car that also ran for a long time around Australia and in other parts of the world as well. The Mini, or the Mini Miner, known to countless millions of people around the globe. It's not down in the history books, noted for effortless performance, nor luxurious interiors, but more a humble car. A car to get you from A to B. A car designed for the working class man, and a lot of fun to drive. So today it's an opportunity, a chance to showcase the mighty Mini and let them have their day in the sun. Welcome to the 2017 Mini Kingdom Online second annual show and shine. <laughs> This is a mini show. Well, not a mini show, it's a big show. But it shines the spotlight on one of the smallest production cars built. Humble, simplistic, and in some cases, almost three quarters of a tonne of attitude. The history of the Mini has entertained millions of people over half a century. Well, of course the Mini was a small, economical car. If it had of gulped fuel, it just would not have made sense. It was produced by the English-based British Motor Corporation, or known as the BMC. Well, don't be late because you'll get the DCM. It was made from 1959 to 1968. British Leyland from 1968 to 1986, and then the Rover Group from 1986 through into a fairly recent year of 2000. Early engines gave choice of really small through to small. 848cc, 970cc. 997cc, 998cc, 1071cc, 1098cc and the coolest kit on the block ran the 1275cc, almost a healthy 1.3 litre engine. The shape of the Mini was virtually exclusive. It was an icon of 1960s British culture. Interior space was different. From the outside, it looked so small you wouldn't think anyone could fit on the inside. To think a couple of big burly highway patrol cops squeezed inside these things, they'd get to know each other fairly quickly. Funny enough though, front leg room for people in front was amazing, catering for almost the tallest person and their donuts. This Mini set the benchmark of a space-saving transverse engine front-wheel drive layout, which allowed 80% of the area of the car's floor pan to be used for passengers and luggage, inspiring many car makers to follow in design thereafter. Would you believe that in 1999, the Mini was voted the second most influential car of the 20th century? No, me either. But the Mini came in behind the Ford Model T and ahead of the Citroen DS and Volkswagen Beetle. Amazing stats. There is some nice racing history for this small car as well. Known to many as the brick, they sit so low it's as though it doesn't have any tyres fitted at all. But here lies the distinct advantage of handling. Built into subframes, the rubber cone system gave a raw and bumpy ride, accentuated by the woven webbing seats. But the rigidity of the rubber cones, together with the wheels positioning at the corners of the car, gave the Mini go-kart-like handling. And in Cooper S trim, under brakes and around corners, the Mini could reduce speed, negotiate the corner and slingshot back out while others were still turning in. The Mini project came about because of a fuel shortage caused by the 1956 Suez Crisis. Petrol was once again rationed in the UK. Sales of what large cars there were slumped and the market for German bubble cars boomed. Some basic design requirements were laid down. The car was based on a box that measured 10 feet by 4 by 4 feet. The passenger accommodation should occupy 6 feet, that's 1.8 metres, of the 10 foot length. A total of over 5 million minis were manufactured, with nearly 1.6 million sold in Britain. With me now, the Mini Enthusiast Chairman. We have Rob. Hello, mate. Hello, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. Thanks for having me along. 
That's all right, mate. Thanks for coming along. That's right. An opportunity to showcase these uh, mighty minis. Yeah, the uh, the little pocket rockets that. Um, Probably the most iconic car of the 20th century, the we, little Mini. We have lots of cars on classic restos. Of course, we have our iconic Australian makes. We have our American makes. These car shows don't come along all that often. And it was good the diary was free because I thought, hey, what an opportunity to put the spotlight uh, on some British cars. Now, the Mini Car Club of New South Wales, tell us about that. All right, well, the Mini Car Club in New South Wales was come, came out of a couple of clubs, but they've basically been going for 50 years was from a group of enthusiasts started up in a garage back in the 60s when, of course, the iconic car came along, and uh, it's just grown from there. It's an amazing thing, isn't it, that such uh, a car that was made as a basic model for the struggling person to get from A to B all these years later, they made millions of them, and now it's a car so iconic and with a massive following. Yeah, yeah, you're right there. Um, Sir Alec is going as the original designer was given a brief uh, after the Suez oil crisis to design a car that was used very little petrol mm. and used most of the parts that were already in production yep. with BMC. Yep. Awesome stuff, Rob. Now, you're watching the show, you'd like to be a part of uh, the Mini Car Club of New South Wales now. Social media these days, Facebook, everyone's easy to find, but contact details, Rob? Yeah, look, uh, we've got uh, social media we're doing with Facebook. We've got a website, miniclub.com. Um, all the details and all the uh, methods to sign up and join the club. Good on you, Rob. Look, lots uh, coming up for 2017. Obviously, every year you guys have got plenty happening. Uh, what a whole bunch of fun, hey? Great people, fun cars. Well, that's what it's all about. It is, Fletch, and um, I really appreciate the time that you're giving us to showcase our cars. That's all right. And, um, and get, get more of them out there. Yep. And the more we can get out there, the better love we. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you, Rob. All right. Thank you, Fletch. Making our way through this interesting little day. Not only do we have a British car, we have a guy from the old country as well. How are you doing, Andy? Very well, thank you, Fletch. That's the way. Thanks for coming. Yeah, thanks. Now, how long have you been here in Australia? I've been here for about three years now. Yeah, do you like it? I love it. Yeah. You know, it's something about interviewing a guy from the UK uh, with this outstanding 1961 Mini. What can you tell us about it? Well, it's uh, early 1961. It was bought over in uh, March 1961 in kit form, in boxes, then assembled at Zetland and uh, put together. Registered in July of 1961, it spent all its time up around Musselbrook. What does it mean to you being here in Australia and um, hanging around a car that was manufactured and, well, sold millions uh, in the UK? Well, I've always had minis since about uh, I was about 17 years old and I had my first uh, mini and um, always loved them. And uh, yeah, and get, to get one as close to 1959 as possible and is in as superb condition as this one is, yep. it's all a bonus. Now, Andy. What were the Poms thinking when they designed these things? Not the easiest to work on, right? That's true, but uh, the spark plugs are easy to get to, but uh, so is the water. Water gets in the generator, the distributor on the spark plugs, so they commonly break down when it rains. <laughs> <laughs> but they were, they were designed in a country that gets a lot of rain, right? Yeah, true, true. And what's the story of the fan? It, act, it doesn't pull air through the radiator, it actually pushes, right? It does, yeah, that's correct. It pulls it through the grill and then back back out through the radiator. But, uh, it, it, does it, it does that with the water as well. <laughs> and the heat off the engine. Yeah, and, and the heat off the engine too. <laughs> Good on you, Andy. Well, look, thank you very much, mate, for the chat. Um, sun's out here. This uh, this uh, Aussie heat, it must be killing you. It is, it is. <laughs> we must be up to 23 already. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's hot in English summertime, Fletch. <laughs> good on you, mate. It's lovely having a chat, mate, and uh, the preservation of this mini, uh, good on you and well done. Cheers, Fletch. Thank you. From an original car through to a custom. Hello, Michael. Good day, Fletch. How are you? Good, mate. You? Yeah, not too bad. That's good. I like what you've done here. Thank you. Um, you've got a 1976 Mini Clubman and you've uh, thrown a little bit of your own persona into it. Yes, mate, yeah, just trying to do something a little bit different uh, in the Mini scene. Most things have been done, so just my own little touch on the car. Yep. I like your attention to detail. Everywhere you look, even down to a heater wire, going to uh, uh, the switch there yep. uh, near the head, everything's neat, your wiring's neat. Uh, carbon fibre look-alike yep. as well, yep. bit of that going on? Yeah, yeah, did it all myself. Um, Took me about eight months in the garage at home, a lot of late nights, and yeah. Um, yeah. 
Okay, Michael, here in the GoGo department, what are we looking at? Okay, so here we've got um, a 998 that's been highly modified um, by one of the legends, uh, Graham Russell, a uh, local guy to Sydney here. Uh, it's got a, one of his custom downdraft Weber setups. No matter where you look at this car, from under the bonnet, uh, even through from your engine mounts, uh, through to, as I mentioned before, your wiring, you've chromed the alternator, you've just done some little touches that aren't over the top, you've just dressed it up and it looks very, very neat. We look on the inside, the seats are good, comfortable? Yes, they are. They're actually out of the newer Minis, the Rovers, um, had the headrest chopped off. Mm -hmm. Uh, just to make it that old classic um, low back seats. Yep. Uh, the original uh, rear seat is still in there, just been re-trimmed. Uh -huh. And yeah, just, yeah, again, my own little touch to it. Now, by 1976, British Leyland, they were making the Minis here in Australia, right? Correct, yeah. So this car was actually made at Zetland in Sydney. Uh -huh. It's interesting too, the tradition, uh, when we look on the outside of the bodies, where they, they still have kept the external seams and external door hinges as well. Correct, yeah. So the seams, um, the doors pretty much are all the same, it's just the front side of the car. Uh, these are actually known as the square nose, where the earlier minis are known as the round nose minis. Right. Before I let you go, uh, the type of wheels and then paint colour. Okay, so the paint colour is Scarlet O'Hara, uh, original paint colour, and the wheels are a 12 by 5, so a little bit bigger than the original ones, mm -hmm. and they're a mini light um, rim. Yeah. yeah. And they're uh, iconic with the brand too, aren't they? They are, they are. So I've actually got the original Mini GT wheels on there. Um, but um, in fact, yeah, I've got a flat tyre on one of them. So I've got these wheels on there for the show today. Good on you, mate. Thank nice you. Nice meeting up with you, Thank Michael. You Thank you very much. You're welcome, mate. Cheers. With us now, larger than life and still giving cheek, we've got race car legend Donny Holland. How are you, Don? Oh, very well, thank you, Fletch. That's the way. You having fun? I am. It's a beautiful day with magnificent motor cars here. Geez, mate, you're quiet as soon as the record light comes on. Am I what? <laughs> <laughs> now, Donny, you've uh, driven many, many cars. Uh, just quickly run through the cars that you have driven in your racing career. Uh, Austin Healy's, Minis, Mini Coopers, Cooper S's, lightweight Cooper S's, Tirana's. Oh, 350 Monaro, Tiranas, all the extra ones, L34 Tirana, A9X Tirana, uh, Mazda RX-7s, and, uh, and then our Formula Fords. You know what, you've got to give it to this guy. From the small cars right through to the big bangers, this guy has driven the lot. Now, Don, obviously the emphasis today is on the Mini. Walk us through, what were the uh, Cooper S's like to drive on the racetrack? Oh, it was magnificent. Yeah, really, they were. We started off with the first off with an 850 at Bathurst in uh, 73, uh, 63, sorry, and then I rode the Cooper 64, 65, 66, 67 with Peter Cray. Now, Donny, we're talking of a racing era back in the 60s, back in the time when, to the likes of Freddie Gibson, Bruce McPhee, Foley, all these guys, the BMC Works team. You're all part of that, right? Yeah, we're all part of the whole scene from the early 60s right through to the mid 70s. What was it like? Or even the 80s? It was. Uh, we just went and we entertained the public, paid to entertain the public in those days. But uh, it was terrific motor racing, and you know, if you didn't have any money, you could go motor racing if you put, dedicated all your time to it in those days. Racing against the, you know, the other cars, and I become a works driver in '66 through to 70 uh, with a BMC. But um, you know, then I went X year ones because the Mini wasn't capable of winning outright at Bathurst after that. And um, yeah, and that's what we kept going from there. Did it give you a lot of enjoyment at Bathurst, sneaking up on the big boys under brakes? Oh, that, that was that was probably the best part of it, the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, 1970, yeah, Gibson and Moffat uh, completely run out of brakes uh, not far from the end, and uh, also with Johnny French. And uh, yeah, Dunlop uh, was supposed to bring some tyres in for us, didn't bring them out. They arrived by boat on the Tuesday after Bathurst. That's handy. They were supposed to be flown in. We put them on for the last session and we were three seconds a lap quicker. Wow. We still come third out, right? But if we'd had them all day, we'd, we'd, have, we'd have been that far in front that yeah. uh, Moffat wouldn't have seen which way we went. Well, are these some of the cars too back in the day, Don, where at the end of the day uh, you'd get in and drive home? Well, you had to. They were stock standard motor cars and they, and they were tested on after Bathurst, after the Sunday race. They were sealed and you had to take them in the, the next day in and pull them apart and make sure they were all the correct car. Yeah, I love that. To think you race them all day and then you, you drove them home with your number plates on. We did. Well, most of the, if you have a look at a lot of the cars that raced at Bathurst, they all had their number plates on them. Yes.
Donnie, we'll have to leave it there, mate. We could talk to you for ages. On the behalf of everybody, thank you for coming along here today. It's been wonderful catching up with you and uh, hearing just some of your stories, mate. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, Fletch. It's been a magnificent time to be here and try to recollect all these old memories yeah. and uh, some of the magic minis that are here today. Time for a pretty original Cooper S now. Hello, Ian. Hi, Fletch. How are you doing? Good, you? Yeah, great. Yep. That's good. You're a big fella. How do you fit into the little car? Well, because it's a Mini, you can fit in. The legroom in front, it's very surprising, isn't it? It's, it's huge, yeah. They're a very big car. I had, first Cooper S I had got stolen. I went and sat in a brand new XU1. My head hit the roof and the steering wheel was on the side. <laughs> no good. Went and another Cooper S. This is it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, now, I mentioned the word original yes. uh, in its entirety. A percentage out of 100, how original is she? Oh, she's probably... Uh, 80, 90 percent. Yep. Okay. Yep. So uh, walk us through the time you've had it, Ian. What you've done to it, and uh, what happened to the extra 10 or 12 percent to uh, take the 100 percent away? Okay. Well, the uh, engine's been out obviously and been rebuilt. It's got a taco sitting up on top of the dash, which is so you can see it. It's got a sports steering wheel. Of course, all minis have sports steering wheels. Um, and that probably detracts enough. Oh, a couple of gauges in the dash that are a bit different well, too. Well, to me, so far. That's stuff that can be replaced, right? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the, they're period items. Yeah. yeah. Ian, on an emotional level, what does the Mini mean to you? Mate, it's um, very emotional. Yeah, I've had a great time with Minis, racing them, showing them, all that sort of thing. Um, I met my wife, uh, you know, caught up my wife in the car. My children have um, gone to their formals and weddings in the car. So it's family. Yeah. It really is family, yeah. And people say to me, what are you going to do when you die with your cars? Well, you're not, you're not going to know about anything then, are you? Exactly, Fletch. I, this is it. I've had a great time. I've met wonderful people, like yourself, <laughs> and wonderful people. Yeah, just had a great time. Isn't it beautiful that classic cars can become such a, an integral part of our lives? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. yeah they, they do become part of your life, for sure. Tell us what's under the hood, what powers it, and what you've done to it there. Well, it's um, basically Cooper S. It's 1310. Inch and a half carburetors normally fitted to a police Cooper S that are on this car. It's not a police one. Yep. Um, balance, extractors, mm. that's it. Okay, it's been a real pleasure talking to you, Ian. Thank you very much, mate. Thanks, Fletch. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow, what a variety of cars here today. We've had a, an original car on the show, we've had a, a bit of a custom on the show, now we've got fully blown custom. This represents that there's no limit to the imagination. How are you, Michael? I'm good, thanks, Fletch. Great. Th that's great, mate. 1978 Mini, and you've gone berserk on this thing. Absolutely. That was the plan from the start. It was to, I built standard Minis, yep. and this time my wife said, let's do a bling Mini. Mate, you'll never grow old when you've got this. Absolutely, never, never. First question, what's the paint colour? It's called Harlequin, blue to red, and it depends obviously on where, what angle the sun shines, yep. or the light shines as to what colour it is. It's, it's uh, like an orangey tinge to a purple. What inspired you? Well, I've done a few trips to the UK for International Mini Meet. I've been there in 2009, 2014, and I'm going in May this year, 2017, and I'm planning to go in uh, 2019. And they have a paddock of three to 4,000 minis, and you can imagine that there's every type, standard right through to Exhibit A. Yep. And I saw a car in 2009 painted this colour, yep. and it inspired me. Yep. I, I said, that's the colour I want. Yep. Okay, Michael, time to talk about the engine. It's screaming at us to talk to it. You've done some extensive modifications. You've even got some cooling around the induction system. Run us through some of the stuff you've done here. It, it is a standard A-series engine. Uh, it, the engine has been modified, it's been bored out, bigger size, it's about 60 thou over. The supercharger is off a new BMW Mini, uh, it's an Eaton M45, uh, and it's just running a carburetor. It's a fairly basic uh, setup, it really needs to be fuel injected to, to do the fueling properly. So because of that, the tube gets very cold because it's sucking fuel up, and it's very hard to drive in stop-start traffic because the fuel runs back down the tube when you're idling mm -hmm. and the car stalls. So I did a bit of research, came up with this theory that if I heated the tube, the fuel would uh, vaporise a little bit better and it has. It's made the car about 80% 
more better to drive in the traffic than yeah. what it was. Yep. Michael, thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, it's a nice way to round off today's episode. As I said, where do you start? I mean, there were some fantastic minis here. Um, and, and guys put their, their heart and soul into these cars, and it really shows in an event such as this, and that's exactly what you've done here too. You take care, Michael. I will. Thank you, Fletch. Right. Thanks very much. You're welcome, mate. Yeah. Look after the wizard. I will. Thank you. Well, what do you think of that big show? A big show about the mighty Mini. And it was brought to us by Mini Kingdom Online in conjunction with the Mini Car Club of New South Wales. Keep an eye out on social media for a return of the event in 2018. In the meantime, no matter where you're watching Classic Restos from, until next week, please ride and drive safe. I'm Fletch, and I thank you very much for watching. Thank you.